John from Creation Ministries International. Good morning, Dr. John. Good morning, Mick. It's great to have you here again, Dr. John. And of course, uh, every week we mention that we have a text line so people can send their questions into us. And, uh, of course, if you do have any questions right now, that text line number is 0401-949-949. Now, we did get a question uh, that's come in very recently, Dr. John, and it is, my mother doesn't believe the Bible should be taken literally. She says the days of creation could have been over millions of years and not days. We often have theological discussions, but I don't know how to respond to that. Well... How would you respond to that, Dr. John? Well, th- there's, a, there's a short answer, Mick, and there's a long answer. Mm-hmm. And the long answer actually uh, refers to the whole of uh, when did creation occur, how long ago, and dating systems and all of that sort of thing. Yep. But the short answer to uh, our listener there is that uh, obviously people are free to choose whatever they want to believe with the, uh, the Bible. The God uh, has given us free will, as I'm going to talk about this morning. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, Legitimately, when you look at what the text says, you can't make that. You, know, you can't come to that conclusion. Yeah. And uh, but Genesis specifically talks about uh, the days of creation, and they're over six days. But if you really want to uh, get confirmation of that, have a look at uh, Exodus chapter twenty. Now, this is where all the Israelites were gathered at uh, Mount Sinai, and God actually came down on the mountain in smoke and earthquakes and fire and spoke directly to them. Now, that's the only time, I think, in history that uh, God has actually spoken directly at length to a whole group of people. And one of the, uh, the Ten Commandments, when he talks about the Sabbath day, God says, and this was the voice of God speaking to thousands and thousands of people, he said, for in six days I made the heavens and the earth and all that's in them. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, I wouldn't be wanting to argue with that at all. And uh, I think that's the short answer that this listener should give to her mother, mm-hmm. that uh, God himself actually said that verbally and audibly in the presence of hundreds of thousands of people. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to argue with that. That's right. We've been told it's an inspired text, the Bible, mm-hmm. so why would God change it? Yeah, yeah exactly. But, uh, look, one of the things that I wanted to mention too this morning, Mick, is uh, we know school's back, mm-hmm. and we're pretty sure that a lot of our listeners uh, are getting children ready for school or perhaps even driving them to school and listen in while they're uh, on their way. And I was only thinking, you know, your children have got a lot of questions too. Yeah. And it's worthwhile our listeners asking their children what are they hearing at school and what questions have they got because children can ask some very, very tricky questions. Mm. And I, I might add most of the uh, questions that we're getting in at the moment and we're getting a lot, so many that uh, it's not easy to uh, address them all at the same time. You know, I have to take some of them on notice and there are, uh, we've even got a bit of a backlog now. Uh, those uh, children's questions and a lot of questions can be very, very tricky because in some of them the Bible isn't very, uh, isn't very, very specific. Mm-hmm. And uh, the one that I wanted to talk about this morning, we got a question last week and, of course, the uh, week before as well. About uh, One was about the mark that God put on Cain and the other about uh, the rel- relationship between God and the devil. And I want to address those this morning. Okay, we will do very shortly. Now, of course, there are some questions that can be addressed very quickly as well. So uh, we love your questions. Keep sending them in. The text line is 0401-949-949. And uh, if they have to be put on notice, well, we'll get back to you next week. If not, we may be able to answer them straight away. Again, in the studio, Dr. Johns from Creation Ministries International. He answers your questions and talks about, uh, you know, interesting news that's come out in the last uh, week or so. And the text line for your questions is 0401-949-949. Now, Dr John, we had a uh, a question that came in, um, I think, a week or so ago. Can you please explain the division between the devil and God on the earth and the roles they play? A lot of people say, if your God is so good, 
why does he let horrible things happen? That's a good question. It certainly is, Mick, and it's uh, it's something that people have asked for years, of course, uh, because we do claim that God is good and the devil is bad, uh, and if God is more powerful than the devil, then uh, why do uh, bad things happen to good people? You know, mm-hmm. all of these sort of questions. But look, it's a, uh, it's a difficult question to answer completely, and it's a very, very big subject. But first of all, the relationship between God and the devil. And we can only draw our conclusions from what we read in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, we know that God is the only eternal being, and uh, we know that Satan is a created being. Now... We also believe that Satan at some time rebelled against God and uh, drew a whole lot of the uh, other angelic beings with him. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we know that? Well, there are a couple of passages in Scripture, one in Isaiah chapter 14, and people ought to read this for themselves, and the other is in Ezekiel uh, chapter 28. Now, we don't know when that rebellion occurred, Uh, We can't really put a time on it because time as we know it really only began with the creation of the material universe. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, 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 some bodies revolving around other bodies, which gives us a sense of time. Mm -hmm. But in the realm of eternity, there is no time. And uh, in the spirit realm, there is no time. So it's not easy to say when it occurred. We don't know what caused the uh, rebellion because the Bible doesn't say I think you can uh, you can have a bit of a, a guess at it from other uh, things that we read in the scriptures, and I'm making this as a guess. Uh, we know from the book of Hebrews that the angels were actually uh, given the role of helping the the human race. That's yep. that, that's been uh, their role. Yes. Now it's uh, it's possible that uh, Satan refused to do that, and uh, that may well have been what the uh, rebellion was all about but Mm. uh, that is uh, speculation but when Adam and Eve were created in Genesis 1 they were given uh, God gave them dominion over the earth and uh, in some way it seems that uh, when they sinned what we call the uh, the fall somehow that uh, dominion and authority got transferred over to Satan now I don't know really how that happened but if we then look at uh, what Satan said to Jesus in the temptation in the wilderness uh, he said that uh, he had the power over the earth and Jesus didn't correct him so uh, we presume that what he said was uh, was actually true mm-hmm. and when we have a look at uh, some of the passages of scripture we do see that Satan seems to have had a lot of authority over uh, people and over events uh, when we look at the book of Job and we see the destruction that uh, came about uh, to Job, uh, some of his uh, followers were attacked by uh, marauding bands, so Satan presumably had influenced them. And then uh, there were uh, cyclonic winds and fires that destroyed some of his possessions, and it would seem that they had come from the devil. Now, Uh, When we look at the uh, life of Jesus, when he uh, stilled the uh, storm uh, out on the the Sea of Galilee, uh, it's possible that that was demonically inspired. We we don't know, but he he commanded the waves to be still and they obeyed him. Mm. So perhaps there was a... As in the storm was demonic. So so possibly that was demonic. The other uh, passage in Scripture that might suggest that is um, when... Elijah was fleeing from Jezebel who decided that she wanted to uh, cut his head off. Mm -hmm. Then he hid in a cave. And while he was in the cave, there was a tremendous wind that smashed all the uh, rocks and then there was an earthquake and then there was a uh, a fire from heaven. And uh, the Bible specifically says that God wasn't in the wind and he wasn't in the earthquake and he wasn't in the fire. Mm -hmm. He then came to uh, Elijah as a still small voice. So uh, whether that was demonic as well, we just don't know. So whatever, uh, uh, whatever the truth really is, it does appear that Satan had a huge amount of authority over the material world at that time. Yep. Now, he doesn't have that authority anymore. 
you know, after uh, the you know, Jesus event and Jesus' death on the cross, uh, Jesus has got all that authority back. And he specifically says so in Matthew's Gospel. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, he then gave that authority to his followers to go and preach the Gospel. So I think we can say that uh, Satan has been defeated. But... Uh, uh, defeated foes don't always uh, submit, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, he's now a rebel outlaw uh, operating what we might call guerrilla warfare, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, because although he has been defeated, he hasn't given up. And uh, here we are now subject to a lot of the influence of Satan in the world. Yeah, absolutely. It is 25. Uh, Dr. John, we've been talking about, um, uh, you know, God being so good and uh, why does he let horrible things happen yeah well look it's uh, it's a question that people have asked for uh, centuries of course uh, because we're saying that uh, god is good and god is all powerful Mm -hmm. so why is it that uh, bad things happen yep well why why didn't god stop it you know this Mm. this sort of uh, question and uh, i suppose it's pretty easy to see why things were pretty dreadful between the time of the fall and the flood. You know, we we know that uh, uh, the animals were created without fear of man, and so uh, when they became predatory after the fall, it would have been pretty horrific to to live on the earth. Mm. Uh, We know that somehow uh, uh, the demonic forces were able to have some sort of physical presence because they were able to uh, cohabit with the women Mm. and, uh, and produce children to them. But... Uh, and, and we know that uh, Cain's progeny uh, presumably was a, uh, a wicked line of, uh, of people as well. But all of that changed with the flood because uh, all of the, uh, uh, all of the uh, part demonic uh, people would have died in the flood. Uh, all of Cain's progeny died in the flood. Noah was a uh, descendant of Seth who was the uh, replacement son for Abel. Mm-hmm. So we know that the uh, the flood uh, changed any physical presence that Satan seems to have had on the earth. And uh, since then, he's really only had a spiritual presence. But he is able to uh, act through people and uh, have an influence on humanity, yep. particularly amongst those who allow that influence. Now, of course, everybody on earth can submit to uh, demonic influence, and we all do it to a uh, greater or lesser extent depending on our beliefs. You know, uh, none of us is immune from that. Uh, Depends a bit on our beliefs, our culture, our upbringing, uh, social status. You know, we're all sinners by natural birth and we've all been satanically motivated to some extent. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that God did give to man uniquely is free will. I don't believe he gave free will to the angels and we are free to choose to be in submission to God And we do that by accepting the lordship of uh, Jesus Christ in our lives. Otherwise, we remain in a state of rebellion. And then we're heavily influenced by worldly desires. Now, clearly, uh, Christians can be influenced in that way as well. But hopefully, they're, they're serious about overcoming their worldly desires. But Satan is uh, possibly not able to do directly now what he apparently could do before Jesus came. He didn't, as I mentioned before. He does, doesn't have the same authority. But demonic forces are still manipulating through people, and they uh, especially do that through greed and possessions, what the, uh, the Bible calls mammon. Now, that's mm-hmm. often regarded as just money, but it's a little bit more than just money. Mm-hmm. Now, money is not evil of itself. Love, the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, according mm-hmm. to the scriptures. And I think that uh, we see that uh, right throughout the world. You know, if you look at the, uh, uh, the dictators who've had uh, absolute power, like in uh, Romania and in uh, uh, Zimbabwe in recent times, uh, those dictators lived in uh, absolute uh, luxury, uh, palatial, uh, you know, salting away... Um, um, money for themselves in Swiss bank accounts, you know, all of this sort of thing. So uh, uh, God has given man free will and he can't take it back. Otherwise, he wouldn't be God. God is not an Indian giver. 
he has to be true to himself and he would be unrighteous if he uh, took back what he had given. Mm. And uh, so he can't do that to be God. So that's why in many of the most disastrous events that uh, we see around the world, somewhere behind them you'll find power, prestige, money, cost-cutting, greed, you know, all of that sort of thing. And, uh, I mean, if you think of things like... uh, uh, human trafficking, you know, the uh, sex trafficking, uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, slavery, both in ancient days, in uh, more recent centuries, and even today. Yeah. What's behind it? It's money. Mm-hmm. If you think of the uh, the modern uh, drug and criminal gang activity, what's behind it? It's money. Mm-hmm. So, uh, really, uh, uh, things like some of the building collapses that we see, bridge collapses, aircraft accidents, all of those sort of things... Somewhere behind that you'll find uh, human neglect and it's usually because of money. Cost cutting and money. Absolutely. Yep. So, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're behind of all of those things. The Titanic shouldn't have been travelling at the uh, speed it was travelling at mm. and it didn't have enough uh, lifeboats to carry all the passengers and crew. Mm. So, you know, that was a uh, huge disaster. Now... I mean, there are plenty of genuine accidents, but man's greed, selfishness, neglect and sin are behind a lot of them. Yeah, absolutely. You're on 94.9 this morning with Dr. John from Creation Ministries International. Uh, Dr. John, I was sort of thinking, you know, if, if God's sort of looking for his bride, and that is the, uh, the church, he's going to allow some, well, let's say some pressure to happen to us to see what decisions we make. It's easy to make decisions where everything's just peachy, but what decisions do you make when things start going a little awry? What sort of person are you really? That, that, and, that's uh, right, yeah. yeah. And, and, and do you actually uh, blame God under those circumstances? And that's the uh, tendency that uh, we all have. I mean, uh, Adam did that at the fall, didn't he? He said, that woman you gave me, you know, she did it. You know? mm. so, <laughs> and uh, Eve then said, well, you know, the devil made me do it. You know? So we are always uh, looking to, uh, to blame somebody else. Mm. But God won't override our free will. That is the one thing that we can be absolutely certain of and we can also be certain that he's always good. And he does give us a lot of uh, warnings and ways of escape in Scripture, but we don't necessarily take any notice of them. You know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I didn't read it out, but somebody else on this program uh, at breakfast time read out Psalm 91. And uh, I'm sure that uh, that's part of the protection that uh, God gives us. But you see... um, Uh, If we haven't submitted to the Lordship of Jesus, then we really don't have any right to uh, depend on any of the scriptural passages that give us protection. And by that I mean we have to be 100% committed. Now, Mm -hmm. which of us is? You know, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, we may get warnings, but uh, sometimes we uh, we ignore them. But if you think about Psalm ninety one, th- there's uh, a couple of passages in verse verses five and six. It talks about four threats: the terror by night, the arrow by day, the pestilence in darkness, the destruction at noonday. Now. You can look at those and analyse them and uh, there are so many things that could be uh, included under those headings. Wars and natural disasters, uh, pestilences like uh, coronavirus and (laughs) all of these sort of things. Now, quite clearly, uh, genuine accidents uh, do happen because we live in a fallen world. And one of the things that uh, that should be a reminder of us is the devastating effect of the fall and sin. I mean, from God's perspective, that was incredibly devastating. We tend to gloss over it a bit. We we don't see sin as quite as bad as it really is. But uh, when you think about it, it required the Son of God to uh, go to the cross to pay the price for it. And uh, really, sin is so much worse than uh, we uh, allow it to uh, to be. And uh, 
Our, our bodies, you know, it's all part of the fall, some of the uh, afflictions that we, uh, we have. Our bodies are deteriorating as a result of harmful mutations. Uh, genetic diseases are on the increase. They are all part of the fall and the entry of sin into the world. Now, God's not doing that to people, but, uh, but they are happening and they are on the increase. Yep. And a couple of weeks ago, I read a very interesting article about uh, sudden cardiac arrest in apparently healthy people. Mm -hmm. And uh, this has happened. It's been happening for centuries. You see this uh, sort of thing happening. And uh, the researchers at the Mayo Clinic uh, picked up a, uh, a clue because they saw that it had happened to a couple of, uh, and, and this is in young, fit, apparently healthy people. Mm -hmm. uh, they had seen it had happened, and it had happened in a couple of cases in the Amish community. And that really started them thinking that maybe there is some genetic influence there. And so they, uh, they did examine it, and sure enough, what they found was that it was a genetic problem. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, after exercise, apparently uh, fit, healthy young people just had uh, cardiac arrests and, uh, and died. You know, uh, so we have all of these uh, harmful mutations and uh, the genetic effects that are uh, causing problems with us. Uh, we also have no idea how much our lifestyle, our emotions, our nutrition, our farming, our food production, all our labour saving gadgets like mobile phones, we have no idea what harm they do mm. you know but we want them because uh, they're all good for us mm. but when you think about it there's a, a whole lot of money involved isn't there yes. you know <laughs> uh, i mean the manufacturers of mobile phones are out to make money and whether they irradiate and fry your brain uh, you know who, who knows you know we, we just don't know the answer to a lot of those things but when you think about the uh, farming production methods, the use of hormones, the use of antibiotics, you know, all of these are contributing to the uh, problems that we have. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the bottom line, uh, what are they doing? They're all there as part of business to make money, you know. Uh, yep. uh, th that's all at the, uh, the, the back of it. You know, we might personally uh, not be at fault. Uh, nobody else may directly be at fault. But God directly, uh, d definitely isn't at fault. You know, and the sooner we uh, decide that we uh, uh, we believe God is good all the time, and that there is probably another problem at the uh, the back of it, then um, uh, the the better off we'll be. God's dealt with our personal sin problem by giving us uh, forgiveness uh, through Jesus on the cross, and we are free to uh, choose or to uh, neglect His offer. And that offer includes eternal life with him in the new heavens and the new earth that he's creating. And we know this one's temporary and that we have a relatively short lifespan personally. So in that sense, this life is not so important. And uh, it definitely does not pay us to uh, blame God for any of the things that happen. And look, uh, I, I think that's the main message that we have for our listeners this morning. God is always good. He's always righteous, he's always justice, and he's our only source of protection. And, uh, you know, everybody in the media are presently in great fear and panic surrounding this coronavirus that's, uh, you know, supposedly going to kill us all. Well, I think the, uh, the best remedy we have is not the mask that you were talking about before, mm -hmm. but read Psalm 91 and read it daily. I think uh, that's <laughs> probably the best message I could give to all our listeners this morning. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Dr. John. Another awesome week. You know, I sometimes think, you know, we have a bit of a whinge about, um, you know, maybe losing someone close to us who's young. Imagine being on the other side of the line, you know, after I have uh, died and gone to heaven. Imagine being there talking to some of my friends. They're going, oh, wait till you meet my son or my grandson. Yeah, can't wait for him to get here. So on one side, we're all going, oh, no. And on the other side, they're going, yippee. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, those people who do have faith and know they're going to heaven, well, they know that on the other side of the line, there's something pretty exciting going on. It's, um, I guess faith has a lot to do with how you feel about some of those things happening on this side as well. The reason we're here on earth, uh, Mick, is to have our relationship with the Lord re-established. And once, uh, once that's established, we are 
then in eternal life regardless of what happens to us on earth yes you are on 94.9 thank you dr john hey if you've got any questions for next week please just send them through and uh, we have got one that's just come through dr john i'll read it to you in a moment that number the text line 0401 949 949 you are on 94.9 it's 8:57. good morning